Greetings, everyone. I hope you are all doing wonderfully. Before I get into the topic this week, would you kindly follow me on Odyssey? That would be swell. That would be wonderful. I'll be your best friend, and I'll be so happy. So please, uh, the link is in the description. Please follow me on Odyssey if you would. Thank you in advance. So this week... And this is just going to kind of be yet another maybe intuitive rambling. Um, you know, some of you seem to enjoy this stuff. Um, but really, um, you know, getting my thoughts out there and getting, uh, you know, reading your comments and questions and thoughts is what this year is all about as far as what I'm doing on YouTube. So... I've been thinking a lot about kind of the, the, how do I say this? The schizophrenic nature of what it means to be human. And what I mean is we have this animal body. We have animal instincts, animal drives. Okay. But then we also have this sort of psychology, this, the um you know the the monkey expansion pack right the frontal lobes the neocortex so we have this uh you know in ourselves we have kind of a split sort of being don't we we have this creature with drives and instincts and needs that are very uh, that just sustain the creature sustain the body like all of the other animals. But then we have something more. And I've been thinking about how those two blend together or how, you know, inseparable those really are, or at least how that seems these days. Because I notice in myself that there are... Uh, there can be a rational sort of conversation to do with base desires, okay? You can talk about base desires in a way that is rational, you know, that, that touches on, uh, that reaches human rationality, but yet is wholly and completely something which just sustains the, the creature, sustains the animal body, right? And to, as far as I know, we're the only creatures on the earth that can do this sort of thing. And that can lead to a lot of confusion, I feel like. You know, I've been thinking about like dolphins, for example. Like dolphins seem to be able to communicate with each other with what seems to be a fairly complex uh, language in a sense, or maybe not so much a language in the, in the way that we use it, but in a sense they're, you know, they have, they seem to be creatures that are of some sort of higher awareness. Okay. And yet now I'm not fully comparing dolphins to human beings, but dolphins don't seem to have at least to my knowledge, don't seem to have the same sort of issues with, you know, anxiety, depression, ADHD, and all the stuff that human beings seem to be plagued with. And I feel like there's a lot of, so this is just kind of, you know, I don't really have, I'm just kind of forming my thoughts kind of as I'm speaking, and I don't really have any conclusions other than to kind of observe, I guess, that there is sort of a, if we're not careful, and I think we, we, we all do this unconsciously, there's, there's sort of a conflation of the biology and the psychology. And you know, being a human being, it's, it's, it can be quite difficult to know 
where one begins and the other ends. And so I've been thinking a lot about that. And and then of course thinking about like well what sort of what sort of ordered systems have humans devised in order to reconcile that in order to um acknowledge that and perhaps you could say manage that or navigate it i think that's a better word how to navigate this sort of dualistic schizophrenic uh thing that is the human being which has this which has these animal needs but then also has has to reconcile these base desires and emotions with this other sense this uh th with the intellect And we don't seem to be very good at that. I think we can, you know, I, for myself personally, I find, because I'm a feeler uh, predominantly. I'm not a thinker. Uh, I don't tend towards that. I'm more of a feeler. But I find myself uh, more in the intellectual realm as a way to sort of uh, check out from feeling, check out to escape, I, I suppose, in in, uh, in a way to, to get away from intense negative emotion, perhaps, from experiencing that. So, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing to be, to have this kind of dual nature it's certainly not an easy thing. I think we all would agree that it would be easier to be just be a dolphin, to just be a house cat, or any sort of creature. Because you're free, the creature is free from the burden of psychology. Or free from the burden of the, the intellect and the conflation of or this, this, you know, this guilt that we can uh, process that has very much to do with just basic needs. And yet we psychologize our basic needs. We psychologize them into some sort of strange sort of like, you know, amalgam, uh, emotional bouillabaisse of of guilt and shame and anxiety. And we do all this stuff when we go round and round in circles. I mean, we're, <laughs> we, we're, we can literally drive ourselves insane that way. And I think collectively, you know, you probably know about the fourth turning. You may have heard about this idea. I think this, that book came out in like the early nineties where there's a, and I've talked about this before, uh, in, in the sense of there's this intergenerational, uh, there's, these, the, there's these intergenerational cycles. Or The fourth turning actually is pretty well organized because in the book, it basically says that there are like 20-year periods. So think of, think of the 80-year uh, intergenerational cycle every 20 years as a turning or a season. And so there's four seasons to our kind of collective societal, uh, you know, psychology. Okay. So we have this stuff going on as individuals, but then collectively there are these cycles as well that are kind of, and then, so it's very hard. It, it can be very difficult to know, at least for me, it's sometimes it's impossible to know the difference between uh, the things I take in about, you know, what's going on in the world and what's going on with me. The, the lines are completely blurred for someone like me. So it's very difficult. Um, so I just, I guess, you know, what I'm, what I'm really curious to explore is this notion of, or this 
sort of confusion that I know I have and many of us have, or I guess all of us perhaps, where we psychologize and rationalize a lot of things that, so think about it this way. If an animal, take like a, just a house cat. I have a few cats running around here somewhere. And think about how you could instill fear into a house cat, right? You could uh, make a really loud noise. You can chase it around the house. You can't, you know, you can act aggressively towards an animal. The animal is going to feel fear in the body because there's a direct threat, okay? Now, if you told the animal in nice, um, pleasing tones, and even in just regular language, if you told the animal all sorts of hateful things, and you wanted to uh, kill it and eat it for supper, and et cetera, et cetera, the, the animal doesn't know, it doesn't really have any kind of sense of that. But an animal to be frightened... Um, that it only knows, in other words, the animal only really knows that instinctual level of fear. And yet human beings, of course, have this psychological element of fear. But it seems to me that we can psychologize fear into the instinctual body and then and then the uh, and then it works in the other direction as well. So, the instinctual fears, like if you just have a feeling or there's there's no rational basis for your fear, okay, which is very common, just like an animal, okay? An animal can have no rational basis for fear. It can be afraid of some loud noise outside, but that noise is not going to, nothing's going to come into the house. And, you know, every time the garbage, every week the garbage trucks come by and the cats are used to it. They, they, they know what it is, but they still instinctually... They will still kind of just freeze. What is that? They'll take a moment. So that's an instinctual trigger of fear. Well, in the human being, we can have that where we don't, because remember, we have this animal body, right? We have this instinctual side to, side to us that can be running the show much of the time, and we're not even realizing it. Well, you can have these things come up within you, instinctual irrational fears, but then you can psychologize them just like that. You, you, you kind of, and, and I realize that it's very easy to sort of enmesh your base instinctual fears. Those can just be enmeshed with your psychology and with your sense of self. And then you don't know where one ends and the other begins. And then you're completely hosed. Okay. And it can happen the other way around as well. You can have, you can have psychologically, you can have some horrifying thoughts and that can have an effect on your instinctual, irrational, intuitive side. It can affect your body and make you sick. Okay. And I feel like these two things I'm describing, the biology and the psychology, I'll call them, I don't really, th I, I just can't bring myself to think of these as two separate things. I don't think they're separate. I don't think they could possibly be separate in the sense that they have no relation to each other. They can't affect each other and they can't bleed in and out of each other. So much so that I think it's, I think it's self-evident and our lives are proof of this notion that biology and psychology are actually, I mean, can you really tell the difference? I, besides, you know, our having some sort of description in, in language, which language is great at cutting things up, separating things and classifying things and labeling things, but it's terrible at reconciling where two things which seem disparate actually in reality do relate integrally to one another and so 
I'm beginning to to think a lot more that you know the better I can treat my biology the better it is for my psychology and I think you know we kind of intuitively know this and I think the other way is true as well the better I can treat my own psychology the better my biology will benefit from that and so I don't think those are separate at all and so maybe it's something worth thinking about so yeah so I think I'll leave it there I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time